Hey, it's News From Heaven. Today we're gonna to teach you how to win spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare being the kind of warfare that I could recommend wholeheartedly and that has unquestionably a net positive effect for yourself, for the human race. The point of it is to try to liberate the good people of the world, yourself, myself, everybody, from the negative side of psychology. I feel like lots of really good people, lots of people that should be happy and fulfilled are walking around absolutely crippled by all kinds of negative stuff. And this can be everything from worry and feelings of worthlessness, the negative self-perception, to somebody who should be wrapped up in what's good and useful is instead focusing on something destructive and tangential to existence. All kinds of stuff gets in there, saps out our potential, and the way out is the spiritual warfare. So we're going to be looking at that in the, in the hopes of being able to arm ourselves to help ourselves and help other people, because that's the point. Even though it doesn't seem like it's the point at times, it seems like it's all this weird competition between people, but actually, we're all friends. I mean, we're, we are all can be working toward a common goal, and that's what the kind of warfare that spiritual warfare is. It's actually a bringing together in the end, and we're going to look at a pretty good template, because we're going to look at, spoiler alert, how God does it. So, like and subscribe if, if you haven't already, because where else are you getting your spiritual warfare tips, all right? So, we're going to jump into Swedenborg's material. As always, we should try to figure out life in the mind by taking an annotated journey through them. That's a tagline. I should have already said it. Download in the description. There's a link to Swedenborg's Secrets of Heaven, Volume 2. You can follow right along if you want. And we're going to be beginning in number 1812. Hey, the War of 1812. I don't know if that's a good reference or what, but we're going we're gonna to skip this beginning segment here because there's a can of worms and it's really where we want to begin is right here while the lord okay take it easy deep breath before this first sentence because we're right away avalanche of cool stuff that's the swedenborg avalanche coming right down on us no warning while the lord was living in the world so we're talking about jesus christ who swedenborg says is god setting the path that we can all follow he never stopped fighting and winning his inward battles. So a couple of takeaways. Takeaway one, uh, God did it. Is spiritual warfare good enough for you? It's good enough for God. And not only that, this is something that God did his whole life. This was not just a ho an occasional hobby. This is Jesus never stopped fighting. So whatever these spiritual battles or this spiritual warfare was, it must have been fairly important if you say, oh, I'm God and I'm going to come down into the world for 33 years and engage in something, you got to divide your time well, right, if you've got this huge mission. So somehow these spiritual battles, this spiritual warfare was worth doing all the time. And look at this way they're described here, inward battles, because that's what spiritual warfare is, right? So the second point is it's inward. So we are not talking about, you know, the, the spiritual warfare that's, okay, I'm going to find my neighbor as my spiritual enemy because they don't do what I want them to do with the trash cans when it's windy. Let's go at them. This is something different. This is the battle against something inward, something inside us. All right, there's our premise. So can we take a tip if God is doing it? Can we get some pointers? Like, how did you get it done? Because we're sitting here often pretty overwhelmed by what's coming at us, right? If there really is a divine way to go about it, what would Jesus do in this situation? We'd love to know, how did you take on these, these clouds? And what were your clouds? And, and what we're going to find out here is, what was the reason you were doing it? The how-to has to do with why. The how-to, and we got to write that down to remember. The how-to has to equal why we do it, because the why is the how-to. <sighs> so mysterious. He did so, if the first sentence was an avalanche, this is an avalanche made of smaller avalanches. He did so with the constant, deepest trust and faith that he would inevitably win. Because he was fighting for the salvation of the entire human race, motivated by pure love. That is what believing in Jehovah is here. Ooh, man. All right. You all right? Everyone survived that? Let's, let's break it down because we've got 
Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough highlighter colors. I'm starting to panic just a little bit because so God what was fighting these inward battles and did so with constant deepest trust and faith that he would inevitably win. That's the first thing. Everything in blue here is the first component. So God has this trust that I'm going I'm going to be able to do this. When I'm entering into these battles, I know I'm going to be able to do this. Why? Because he was fighting for the salvation of the entire human race. That so part of why this because means he knew he would win because so how do we win? Well, there's some way that God knew that God would win because fighting for salvation of the entire human race. Okay, that's the second part. But then, motivated, the why that we were looking at over here, motivated by pure love. This is what believing in Jehovah is here. So we're getting a definition for believing in God. Okay, okay. Can we go back over this? Right, come on, it doesn't cost anything. He did so. He was fighting these inward battles. Whatever they were, we don't know exactly what's going on in the Lord's heart and mind. But we did know, you know that he did so thinking he's going to win. And what enabled him to do that? Because he had a really good goal, which was the salvation of the entire human race, motivated by pure love. That somehow the combination of these two allowed him to know, I'm going to do this. I can take this. So how can we apply this to us? And how this is believing in Jehovah. That's fun. That's a cool definition. Because what you know, we get this imperative, believe in God. Just believe in God. God will help you think through things. It's really important to believe in God. What does it mean? What does it mean to believe in God? I'm sorry. Like I know we're pretty deep into this course of life, but I'm not sure I get the premise. What, do, what does it mean, believe in God? Believe that God exists. What does it mean? So here it's saying, motivated by pure love. So if you're, I'm doing this because I love everyone and I want to save everyone and I know that I can do it because it's for that, from that love through the means of doing it for everyone, that's believing in God. Believing in God has to do with this love. The reason why we're doing it. The why is universal love. Universal love. Love for the whole human race. And how do we then apply that to our own little battles? Let's take a look. Swedenborg now breaks it from God's experience to everyone's experience. The love from which a person fights reveals what faith that person has. Okay? You may not care what kind of faith you have, but this is an integral part of our ability to successfully wage spiritual warfare. People who fight from some other love, and I would say motivated by some other love, then love for their neighbor, love for their neighbor, and for the Lord's kingdom, do not fight from faith. So even when we're in our spiritual battles, which can be things like we're dealing with crushing despair, or we are dealing with crushing sense of worthlessness, or we are dealing with fear for the future, or we are struggling against some kind of evil tendency that we feel like this is ruining things in my life. I don't want to be that. Even when we're doing that, we can be coming from love of the neighbor and love for the Lord's kingdom. In fact, if we don't come from that, we're not fighting from the faith. And this is the faith that God was fighting from. That is, they do not believe in Jehovah, but in whatever they do love. So when we're, sorry to be toggling this much, but this is just like super cool to take this from the God level into the little bitty us level. So when we're fighting our battles, when we're pushing back against these clouds, as we do, whenever negative stuff enters our minds, we are trying to box it out. It's not always easy. It doesn't always seem like it's effective or it's doing anything, but we're always pushing back against it. But the question is, where do these sloppy arrows originate? What is beating down here that's leading our counteroffensive. <laughs> I'm sorry about my drawing. In every episode I've ever done, I'm so sorry. Thank you for bearing with me. What's here that defines what our success rate is going to be? 
as well as the essence of it. So we don't believe in Jehovah, but whatever we do love, the love they fight for is itself their faith. Take, for example, yeah, could you break? I don't know what you're talking about. Give me an example. Take, for example, a person who fights out of a desire to become greatest in heaven. And you may say, I don't really have a desire to be greatest in heaven. There, heaven is like, is there even heaven these days? Is there, it's something, could there ever be regiment? That may be out of vogue, but there's, it certainly was in vogue in Swedenborg's day. I think there was very much the notion of a hierarchical heaven with uh, the potential to advance was in a lot of people's minds. And I think Swedenborg is especially pointing at the clergy, that you can say like, I'm, but this, but, so, but there's still an application to everybody. We have these elements in every human story. So if you're thinking about, oh, I'm going to win this thing because it's going to make me ethically, morally, spiritually superior to other people. And I'm going to be this awesome thing. This is somehow going to advance whatever your struggle is. If it's going to advance my standing in comparison with the rest of the losers in the human race. Let's say we're fighting from that. What does that do? Does it turn out well? People like this did not believe in Jehovah. And you may, again, what is believing in Jehovah? Didn't we see it right up here? It's universal love. Look at this, universal love, U-L, love. Not just, oh, does God exist or not exist, but believing in the power of that love to solve your problems as well as the human race's problems. Because don't we have, we may not have a dichotomy down here between, oh, you know, do, do I believe intellectually that God exists or not? But when these clouds are coming in, are we, do we have any real estate left on this page? When these clouds are coming in and they're saying, you know, this, this person is a threat to you because they are on the verge of being more loved than you are, or they, they stole your idea, something like that. And it seems like I'm fighting back against all this stuff. And really by extension, these people that seem to be my enemies, it's because you're saying ultimately the love I'm fighting from, it, there's a belief in there. There's a belief in that love that there's, it's a competitive landscape at its core that this whole we all get along and everybody's cool and everybody's friends and we're glad that every, for everyone's success, that can't really be because I've lived in the world. That's not how it feels. People don't mesh well together. It is a little bit of a competition, so on, so on, so on. That is when we don't believe in Jehovah. We don't believe in God because God is universal love. God is the saying that or the expression that actually it works better when we're not worried about being superior to other people or how we stack up in the ranking or the hierarchy with other people, when we, which seems terrifying because, and it, okay, so maybe that's not doing it for you, the, the hierarchy of value, but the, the uh, protecting self from other people, whatever it is, I can't get inside your mind. You, you take my stuff, my blanket, lame, generic examples and apply it to the real stuff that's going on for you. Do we really believe that a, a place in which you know, everybody wants well, the next person to have something even better than them when we're not looking to be superior to other people, whatever it is. Do we really believe that could solve our problems? Do we really believe that would heal us? Do we really trust that scenario? That's what believing in Jehovah is. That's what believing in God is. It's believing that actually light, love, you know, everything that's good, that that really is what we use to push back these fears and worries and everything like that. The belief that actually there can be harmony with all the people and that I'm not worried about how things are going to turn out because I trust that love is the answer and I trust that God is love and God is going to work it in the way that is best for me, even if at times my ego is saying, what are you doing? Why aren't you hooking me up more with the things I think I need to win this game? That's what it means to believe not in Jehovah, but rather in ourselves. And I'm not here to say, some of you are thinking, is he ever going to get through this paragraph? No, I'm never going to get through the paragraph. Some people are saying, maybe saying, um, shoot, that joke was so good, it might have made me forget what I was about to tell you. Oh, right, oh, no, it didn't. It didn't. Nice try, though. 
People like this do not believe in Jehovah, but rather in themselves. I am not sitting here trying to make you feel bad for potentially believing in yourself rather than in some kind of egalitarian, equifinality-infused future where everything is good and everyone's cool with each other. I am saying that I spend a ton of time believing in myself, and it doesn't do anything for me. It actually makes things a lot worse. So I am trying to tell you, hey, I've been there. I tried that. It doesn't work. It's not, it's not actually better for me. That this, the, the whole Lord God thing, the whole universal love thing, there might be something to that. And that might be the only thing that allows us to win at spiritual warfare. Wanting to be greatest is wanting total control over others. So people like this are fighting for dominance. Because when they're in... Is it okay if I go back to this? Just for, just for one teeny little second. When they're in this warfare, when they're, whatever their concerns are, are pressing in on them, and they're pushing back, and they're like, well, I can solve this problem, I can solve this problem, I can solve this problem, and what you're looking for is to end up up here, and powerful, and, be- and stronger than all. What we're, look- what we're fighting for there, say Swedenborg, is dominance. The same is true with all other kinds of love. So the actual love from which a person fights, fights allows you identi- to identify that person's faith. What we fight from determines the outcome of our spiritual warfare, and it determines the nature of the actions within that warfare. So let's take a clue from God. And this is, to me, when I was reading over this, how we, we often come to these topics is I'll be reading some Swedenborg for some, who knows why I'm reading it. And I come across something and I say, oh, that's cool. I really want to share that with news from heaven. So thank you so much for being here. It was really this paragraph here that made me want to pick this whole section. We'll see if it lets you down. In all the struggles the Lord faced. So what's God coming from? What's God's heart? While he was being tested, though, he never fought out of self-love. You think, oh, God would. Because God's so awesome that, of course, God is going to say, well, I'm so awesome, of course, I'm going to fight from this. Or for his own sake. But for everyone in the universe, that's who he's fighting from. You may have heard something like that. Okay, this is nice. This is nice for a Hallmark card. But look at the next sentence. He did not want to become greatest in heaven. Even God? Isn't heaven like sort of your jam? Aren't you the greatest in heaven? This is the real part because this is contrary to divine love, he hardly even wanted to become least. Oh, I'm so humble. Look who thinks he's humbler than I am. All he wanted was for everyone to make something of themselves and be saved. That's it right there. Just feel the, feel the love in that. All he wanted was for everyone to make something of themselves. Kudos to NCE for that translation, to make something of themselves and be saved. That's, that's what he was fighting for. And according to Swedenborg, the trials that the Lord went through, the spiritual struggles that the Lord went through, were horrific. That this was suffering on this cosmic level that luckily we don't have to go through. It just was the worst thing to go through. And that what the Lord was fighting for wasn't even, I'm going to, you, you're attacking me, I'm going to get you back. You're messing with my plans, I'm going to you know, show you that you crossed the wrong deity. But I want everybody in the universe, even including all the hell forces that were attacking him at the time, I want you to make something of yourself. That's it. And think about that. Think about the feeling of somebody wanting you, I want, I want you to be able to make something of yourself. Not in the negative pressure, come, dad, I, I can't be like you kind of sense, but this is the, I want your life to turn out well. I want your life to turn out well. To me, that is very striking, that what, I, what God is doing in the trenches here is just like, I want to make it so that each person can thrive and have a happy life. Like, what is more selfless than that? But you might think <clears throat> that makes you a pushover. But in God's battles, when he was here facing everything negative, it was that love. You know, let's say this little red heart is that love. I just want everybody to be able to make something of themselves. 
and how can I be an assistant to that? That just fried all this evil that was trying to come in. That was so powerful. That was the channel this, from the nuclear heart of the sun that came out and allowed him to, as we saw in the beginning, win all the battles all the time. That was the motivation. And I would put it to you that we can have that same motivation in our own little ways as we go through our battles. Because we can be saying, when we get challenged by dark cloud to say, look, this thing is going to turn out poorly for you. Your reputation is going to suffer because of this. Or this person is going to get this that you don't want them to have or whatever. It's not that you don't act in prudent ways. But you say to those things when they come in, well, I hope that God does what's best for everyone. I hope I can be a part of good coming to everyone and them reaching the greatest happiness, healthy happiness that they can have. Try, try that sometime. It's not always, you can't always get it to stick, but when you do, there's nothing left for the clouds to get at you with. Then suddenly we have this same confidence. Oh yeah, I can win this. And to me, it just opens up. Heaven starts to stream into that and suddenly we're winning spiritual warfare. So <clears throat> Swedenborg links it to this quote. He wanted everyone to make themselves and be saved. He says so too in Mark, the two sons of Zebedee said, grant us to sit on your right and the other on your left in your glory, one on your right, other on your left in glory. Jesus said, anyone who wants to be great among you must be your attendant. And whichever of you wants to be first must be everyone's slave, since even the son of humankind did not come to serve, be served, but to serve others and to give his soul as a ransom price for many. So what does that mean? soul is the ransom price for many. Is it really to appease an angry God who would have killed us all? Or is it this, I want you to make something of yourself. I'm going to go and take on all this hardship just because I want you to go be happy. To me, that's a pretty hip thing to do. That's the the core of spiritual warfare. There's other kinds of warfare where the core of it is conquering, you know, dominion. But that's spiritual warfare. And the only way we can really win in the end, is that after the warfare has ceased, we're a little more in that frame of mind. So that's why fighting from it is important. This love or faith is what the Lord fought from and what is meant here by believing in Jehovah. That's what it is to believe in God, and that's how you win the spiritual warfare. And that's the news from heaven. Hope you liked it. Hope it serves you well throughout your week. Hopefully it becomes a tool in your arsenal. If it is, let me know in the comments. I want to hear how this is affecting you, and I want other people to see ways they could use these concepts to lift them up. And please like and subscribe, click the bell. I, as you can probably tell, I am a little bit giddy that I get to just talk to you about this stuff that is obviously so meaningful to me and I love getting to hear what it means to you. So looking forward to those comments and looking forward to seeing you very soon on the next episode. 